In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to complex numbers. Now, before we formally introduce complex numbers, let's just write down a general quadratic equation. So ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're saying this is equal to zero. Okay, so that's our general quadratic, and we're setting it equal to zero. Now, this would have solutions given by the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, okay? Now, the part underneath the square root here you should recognize. This is the discriminant, okay? And you would have covered this at the beginning of A-level math. So, b squared minus 4ac, okay? And we have three conditions for the discriminant. If b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, then what we say here is there's two distinct real roots. So two distinct real roots. So let's just write this down. So two distinct real roots. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, so b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, then what we say here is that there are two equal real roots. So two equal real roots. So just chart that down as well. And then finally, if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, then what we'd say here is that there is no real roots. So no real roots. And if we just refer back to the solution here to this quadratic equation, then what we're essentially saying is, for the discriminant here, if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, then that solution would be but b squared minus 4ac is negative, clearly. So what we're trying to do then is take the square root of a negative number. Now, if you just quickly put a square root of a negative number into your calculator, what you'll find is it returns a error. It might say maths error or just error, but you should get some form of an error. So that's the issue here. Now, what we say then is there's no real solutions, but we can find solutions to this equation in all cases by extending the number system to include the square root of minus one. Okay, so the square root of minus one. Now, when we take the square root of a number, so let's just refer back to something quite basic. Let's just say we have the square root of four, then we're looking for two numbers that times to give me, or two numbers that times together to give me four in this case. So what we'd say here is plus or minus two, because two squared is four, and minus two squared would also be four. Now, with the square root of minus 1, there's no real number that squares to produce minus 1. So the number that we get here this, of the square root of minus 1 is an imaginary number. And we represent that by using the letter i. Okay. And just a quick note here, if you do physics, you might have already kind of come across this. In physics, traditionally, they use j. However, what we're going to use throughout this video and what you'll see across pretty much all of your A-level firm maths is the letter I. Okay, so just be aware of that. We're also going to use I as well throughout, and you'll probably see that on past papers. Okay, so that's what we call the imaginary number or the imaginary unit. So I is equal to the square root of minus one. Now, an imaginary number, so let's just write this down. So an imaginary number here is a number of the form BI, okay? where b belongs to the reals. So that's what we'd say an imaginary number is. And a complex number, so a complex number is made up of two parts. We have a real part, so the complex number, and then the imaginary part. So it looks something like a plus bi. And again, a and b in this case both belong to the reals. Okay. Now, Another quick point on notation here, we traditionally use the letters Z and W to represent a complex number. So if I just um, rub a bit out up here, just so we've got enough room. So like I said, we use the letters um, Z and W. So let's quickly clear this just at the top. So if I just write this down then, like I said, we use the letter Z or W. So if I use the letter Z here, so the letter Z to represent my complex number, say A plus BI, so A plus bi, then we can split the real and the imaginary parts up. So the real part, we write re z, like so. This represents the real part of the complex number z. 
And like I said, this is the real part, so that's just A, okay? And then for the imaginary part, we write I, M, and then bracket Z. And this is the imaginary part of the complex number Z, which is B here, okay? So that's just kind of how we would separate that. Um, you'll come across this again, like I said, across the A-level firm mass curriculum, so be aware of this. And just one other final note here, the set of all complex numbers is written as C, and we just put a little dash for it like that. Okay, so you'll, again, you'll come across this notation, a bit familiar with it, um, but don't be surprised if you see it, okay? So that's a very basic introduction to complex numbers. What we're going to have a quick practice of now is actually expressing the square root of a negative number as an imaginary number. So like it says here, express each of the following in the form AI, where A is a real number. Now the way we do this here is to use the rules of thirds. So the square root of minus 4, what we do here using the rules of thirds is we write this as the square root of 4 times minus 1. Okay, so that's a 1 there. So the square root of 4 times minus 1. Well, we can then split this up as to two separate thirds, so that would be the square root of 4 times the square root of minus 1. And remember, the square root of minus 1 so minus 1 here, let's just read that, square root of minus 1, we know that's equal to i, okay? So the square root of 4 is 2, we know that, and the square root of minus 1 is equal to i, okay? So there we go, we get 2i. So a, like we see here, is a real number, and that's our solution. For the square root of minus 36 here, again, just splitting it up using the rules of thirds, we can write that as 36 times minus 1, Again, writing this down as two individual thirds, or the product of two individual thirds, we get the square root of 36 times the square root of minus 1. The square root of 36 is 6, and then the square root of minus 1 is i, and we get 6i. For the square root of minus 9, and if you are feeling confident now, you feel like you understand this, have a quick look at these um, last three examples here, c, d, and e. See if you can get the solution. So for the square root of minus 9, again, splitting this up, we get 9 times minus 1. Now writing this as a product of two individual thirds, we get the square root of 9 times the square root of minus 1. So the square root of 9 is 3, so what we get here is 3i. For the square root of minus 169, again, it's quite repetitive, I feel like I can repeat myself quite a bit, but you can see it's quite straightforward. So that's 169 times minus 1. Writing this now as a product, root 169 times square root of minus 1. Square root of 169 is 13, so I get 13i here. Okay, and then for the final example here, e, again, splitting this up using the rules of thirds, we get 81 times minus 1. Now as a product, we get the square root of 81 times the square root of minus 1, and then finally the square root of 81 is 9, so I get 9i here. Okay, and there we have it. So hopefully you did have a go. You got the solutions to C, D, and E there. Okay. So there we have it. So that's our very basic formal introduction to complex numbers. Hopefully nothing um, too crazy just to get us started. What we're going to cover in the next video is adding and subtracting complex numbers.